Okay, this is a story that slipped past me last week, but better late than never, I guess. It looks like the Netflix Castlevania series is coming along quite nicely. The anime-esque series is due out on July 7th and looks like it'll have all the whip-slinging and Dracula fighting that one could want from a Castlevania adaptation. And that's not the only upcoming animated series to look out for. Marvel released a first look at the newly rebooted Spider-Man cartoon this week coming to Disney XD. In case you thought that the movies rebooted Spidey too often, this is the fourth unique Spider-Man animated series since the turn of the century. Over in gaming news, Nintendo has finally released a few details about their mysterious online service coming to the Nintendo Switch. The service, which will be free until 2018, will be required to play online co-op and competitive games, which is interesting since games like Mario Kart 8 and the ARMS Test Punch are already online without such a system. How do they do it? And ever the innovators, Nintendo has innovated voice chat capability right out of the system. Instead, online lobbies and voice chat will be organized via smartphone app in a way that I'm sure won't be needlessly complicated or cumbersome. In fact, Hori is already working on a set of third-party devices to connect both your Switch and your phone to a headset just in case you had the wacky notion of wanting to properly hear both the game and your teammates at the same time. But wait, there's more! Subscribers will also get to download various NES titles, which will be adapted for online play, which... Okay, yeah, being able to online co-op Super Mario Bros. 3, that's kinda cool, I can get behind that. The subscription will also get you some discounts on the Nintendo eShop, so that may be worth considering if you buy a lot of digital games. Running at about $4 a month or $20 a year, Nintendo isn't asking for much, but they really aren't offering much either, so I guess it evens out. Fortunately, customers have until 2018 to decide if it's really worth the purchase. In the meantime, Sonic Mania has a release day. Originally set for a spring release, the Genesis era throwback game was delayed earlier this year but now has a solid release date of August 15th. The new trailer shows off a few of the game's original levels and reveals a new throwback level, namely the past version of Sonic CD's Stardust Speedway. Which reminds me, that's another video series I need to get around to wrapping up. Finally, a new map in Overwatch is literally on the horizon as Blizzard revealed their next assault map, Horizon Lunar Colony. Available for playtesting on the PTR right now, the new map is your standard assault map with a unique gimmick. The zone features a tactically suspect alternate route that takes you into the cold but apparently breathable blackness of space with reduced gravity to play with. It's not particularly useful, but it does introduce a new mechanic that can be applied to the arcade's custom games. Moving on to movies, hitting theaters this week, we have... The Mummy. Tom Cruise goes up against an undead Egyptian princess in what Universal Pictures hopes is the start of their own cinematic horror universe. With Invisible Man, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and Frankenstein's monster all in the works, the whole deal depends on Tom Cruise running The Mummy to box office success. Over on television, Fear the Walking Dead is apparently still a thing, shambling around for its third season on AMC. Meanwhile, Jim Jeffries, my favorite Australian comedian, which granted is a list of one, is getting his own show on Comedy Central. And on BBC One, Orphan Black is still keeping Tatiana Maslany busy playing a dozen different parts for its fifth season. Over in video games, I'm not gonna lie, it's not a huge week. We have Across the Moment, a game that I'm not entirely sure is a game, but it is creepy and cool looking. The same could be said for Conarium, a first-person horror game with a Lovecraftian setting. Monolith is a neat-looking top-down shooter with roguelike elements and a lot of cool-looking designs. And Wonder Boy, the Dragon Trap, is a 2D side-scroller with some pretty great-looking hand-drawn animations that put you in control of a bunch of different characters with their own unique mechanics. And The King's Heroes is our old school RPG of the week, not particularly a good looking one, but hey, every game deserves a chance. Finally, our awesome video of the week comes from our old friend James Farr, who released the second half of his Nintendo Star Wars mashup, The Triforce Awakens. That's it for this week, so does Nintendo's online system sound like a decent value? A buck and a half a month for an online NES game doesn't sound too bad to me, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, share this video with an interested friend, and have a great week!